Texas rule judge rules Sharia divorce proceeding must be observed. So guys, we're starting off the top of the show hot. We got Sharia and none other than the American heartland of Texas. <laughs> okay. So Justice Andrea Thompson, a county district judge in Texas, ruled in March 2021 that in order for Miriam Ayad to divorce her husband, it must be arbitrated by a fic panel. Um, Miriam Ayad filed for divorce in January 2021. In her ruling, the judge stated that the divorce proceeding could not go further because of the Islamic prenuptial agreement. Under the fic, how do you say it, Armin? Fic, F I Q K A. Fic. Okay, thank you. I can't make that noise. <laughs> uh, a woman's testimony. Really? Is worth Try. Fic. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh my. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm choking. Um, <laughs> you need this. You need the Semite blood. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so on these panels, a woman's testimony is worth half versus that of a man's under the divorce proceedings. Miriam responded to the ruling in her statement, stating that she did not realize that she was conceding divorce rights to divorce through Texas courts when signing the prenuptial agreement because she was not given a chance to read the documents properly. Miriam's attorney submitted a writ mandamus petition to the fifth court of appeals in dallas stating judge thompson's decision was a quote abuse of discretion so this is pretty this, so the this texas judge is basically saying mm. you have to get divorced through a sharia court islamic yeah yeah um i mean they i don't know what to feel about this because I'd want I, okay, so secularism, separation of church and state, but this was a private agreement between private individuals. She just didn't read it properly before signing it. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I, okay, Rivka. I don't. I'm not a legal expert. Somebody help me out here. Well, so here's what I'm confused about: the islamic council or the umma whomever cannot issue a marriage license they can sign it but that is a state function that is the function of the state of texas that is who does that and that is where divorces um that's the provenance of them you know the divorce is in their court so what i don't understand is why a prenup that would be legal in a Texas court of law for any other reason, if it's got a religious component, then all of a sudden it negates the statutory rules around divorce? It doesn't make sense to me because now is she just now I would have to do some more research about this, but is she just saying first you have to go through these motions and then we can proceed. But I don't know that if the Islamic court says, no, you can't get divorced, that the state would then abide by that ruling because they don't control that particular statutory rulings. They don't make the laws about what a marriage is, what a divorce is, what are the grounds for divorce. You know, you have to do all of that with the state. The state has a vested interest in it. So, That's a very good point. So she may just be, it may just be, you know, a technical thing that's really narrow where she's saying, look, I can't rule on this until you walk through these hoops. Regardless of what the outcome is, then you can proceed with the divorce in the courts. Who would grant you the divorce? Because it seems to me it doesn't matter what 
the Islamic court rules, if they say, no, you can't get divorced, well, that's not their provenance. They don't get to decide. You know, now, I don't know if one party contests the divorce and then what happens in Texas. You know, do they have no contest? Do they have uncontested? I don't know what the rules for that particular thing is, but she should still be able to apply for a divorce and take him to divorce court, regardless of what the outcome of this Islamic council is, because that's not the one who decides. They don't mm -hmm. want, only the state does. So it may be that she's just saying, do this because you said you would, and then we move on to the next stage. What if a condition of the prenuptial agreement is that the decision of the panel has to be honored? Now, see, that to me seems like that is, then you're in some kind of strange gray area because there are some things that you cannot put in prenups. And one of the things that you can't put in a prenup is something that's illegal, um, stuff about su child support in certain states. Now, I don't know what Texas's laws are about that, but if the condition of the prenup says that you have to abide by a religious ruling, then why would you be married legally anyways? Because that is the state that, that, you know, has that vested interest. You can get married religiously and not be married legally applying for the license, paying the fee, getting the benefits that the state confers on people who are married. All of those things are government vested interest. So it seems to me that that, that part of the prenup would then have to be litigated as well. You know, I think it's interesting that she's mostly focusing on that she didn't know what it said rather than yeah. is it valid in terms of the le the statutory value of this in terms of you how you get a divorce. You didn't read and you didn't understand. Not only you should have read it, you should have hired like a legal expert to read it with well, you before you here's the it. other okay, thing, though. About here's yeah. the other thing is, so contracts, again, are also subject to the laws of the state, what you can and cannot to, you know, do or what is enforceable, et cetera. So even though this is a religious contract for marriage, there's still rules which surround that, that the state has codified. So it seems to me that if the marriage is actually a state function at the end of it, and the state is the one who grants the divorce, the state is the one who issues you the marriage license, et cetera, then it doesn't make sense that a religious contract can trump the rules of law within the whatever those contract rules are or whatever those divorce rules are. Yeah, I think, well, Armin, what were you going to say about signing a contract and that kind of thing? I don't know. I just think like if, I don't know because I okay guys, none of us are here are legal experts, so just please keep keep that in mind while you're listening to us, okay? Um, so we might be completely wrong. I just assume that if if you write in your pre uh, 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 what is it called premarital agreement or whatever that if uh, I don't know, we have to you agree here that for us to get divorced, we're gonna go in front of the mirror and say. Bloody Mary three times, and then when the ghost shows up, then we she's gonna want the gonna be the one that recognizes our divorce and all. And then you read that and you sign it, and you go to court, and the court says, "Well, here you said you have to go in front of a mirror and say say Bloody Mary three times." I don't think the court is recognizing the authority of the ghost by saying that. Well, this is what you're you're gonna do. So I, you know what I mean? Like it's I know actually... separation. It's yeah. actually acknowledging the authority of the contract. Not yes, yes, yes. Okay, I get what your point. So this is not the court recognizing the authority of Sharia. This is like this is just something you guys agreed with each other. Like so, this is what you said. This is what you signed. So I don't. So that, I, again, I don't know. 
Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. It might that might be the reason why they chose this defense when talking about well this whole divorce proceeding. So let me give you guys a little bit of context. Um, in response to this ruling, um, she Miriam stated that she did not realize that she was conceding rights to divorce through Texas courts when signing the prenuptial agreement. The first time she saw the documents, which was the marriage contract and the prenuptial agreements, was during the wedding ceremony itself. Miriam claimed that she was not given a chance to read the documents properly and could not identify what types of documents that she was signing. Her family told her that the papers were just ceremonial. An expert witness explained that asking questions during a wedding ceremony is a cultural taboo, explaining why this woman didn't feel comfortable expressing like, wait, what is this? Like actually spending the time to investigate because it may give the appearance of uncertainty about the union. Well, if you were under pressure, was it, I mean, is this recorded? Like, I don't know if they didn't put a gun to your head and you sign things and you say, you say you were under pressure, then you could use it as an excuse to get out of anything that you signed. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Adults should know that, Signing stuff like that requires not only reading it, but actually reading it with a legal expert. Uh, Rivka? So um, Miriam's attorney had a petition uh, to the court, and in the in this appeal, he said that that the judge's decision was what he called an abuse of discretion because that's what a judge does, right? They make judgments and um he's that cited that she the judge disregarded u.s and state law of texas by substantiating the islamic prenuptial agreement encouraging its implementation now the article itself says a couple things it just says that the divorce has to be mediated by the fic panel right it doesn't say that they necessarily grant it so Again, to Armin's point about upholding the contract, not the Sharia, again, I don't know, but it almost sees, seems like that it couldn't can't go further until it goes through this Islamic panel. And then that outcome, granting it or not granting it, then that would potentially be another hearing. Because the woman could say, well, okay, we mediated it. They said no, but I don't agree, and I want a divorce through the laws of the state of Texas. Man, I mean, Because if that's the case, then this guy can keep her in a marriage situation that she doesn't want to be in. Mm. And then he gets the benefits as well of being married by forcing her. You know, I, do I don't know what happens then. So it'd be really interesting. I, I actually am going to um, ask a couple um, friends of mine who are attorneys exactly what they think about this. But then you need to know what Texas uh, I do law think that is. People, yeah, I do think that people should be able to get away from the people they don't like more easily. But this should be like for all divorces, not like if if not just for this one. Like I don't think like it, there should be a. In my opinion, there should be a general rule where there's like nothing that could hold you in a marriage, but I don't think like if, if this is the, if, if premarital agreements uh, uh, work, you know, in this way, right. We shouldn't make an excuse like, Oh, well, this is Islamic now. So we have, because it's, we got, we're so scared of Islamic stuff. Now we should like have a different standard for this one. Like if there's a problem with this contract that is making this woman's life miserable, then there's a problem with all, um, the the fix needs to not be just because for this one because it's sh Sharia related. The fix needs to be on all of them in general, right? I I I'm also in favor of making like marriage contracts like temporary. So if you're like, so the divorce are, are automatic unless you go and renew it, so that people don't have to go through divorces. Um, they just have to not file for the renewal of their marriage. Uh, so making it actually work to keep your marriage rather than work to get out of the marriage. So anybody who doesn't like to be in a marriage, doesn't go bankrupt if they if they want to get out of something, all they have to do is just not renew a marriage. I think that would be 
more ideal if like marriage contracts were just like five year contracts. Susanna. Oh, Armin, just a note, when you lean that far over, I think you're going a little bit past your mic and your audio sounds like it's coming from behind. So just a quick How about note. now? Perfect. Is this better? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I think that that idea sounds great in principle, Armin, but I think because of the financial things, the child support issues, the issues of you know legality and control of benefits that the state confers on you, all of those things, it would well, the renewal is just like very easy. It would it would necessitate having to go through the courts because I mean this is what people fight about. You know, people uh, people okay. fight over well, I put you through school. So yeah. I'm entitled to half of this money because I didn't work. You know, there's all these right. levels of it that we can't even. All right. So, but in this thing too, in 20, the, the uh, revised order in June transferred the jurisdiction of the divorce to the Islamic Association of North Texas, which that makes me question again, what we were talking about in the beginning about jurisdictional authority, because the Islamic Association of Texas does not actually grant the marriage. They solemnize it, you know, an imam could, but the state is the one. So the state actually has the jurisdiction when it comes to a legal divorce. So all right, I we do need to, guys, we need, this. Okay, guys, we do need to move on to the next news because we've been spending so much time on this. Um, all right. Um, I saw some comments that would have been interesting to answer, but I just highlighted them. Uh, it, but we, because we spent so much time on this news, we're just going to move on to the next one. We'll try to uh, keep it shorter. So if there are comments in the live chat, we could add, uh, answer them as well. Well, um, not on this next story. <laughs> Okay, Mega, you didn't understand what we're saying. You're like, you're not even listening to what we're saying. We didn't recognize Sharia. Like, <laughs> oh, Mega is like, you guys are recognizing Sharia. You didn't, you're not, you're not I listening totally to what did. we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I have no problem with me. <laughs> that's a joke, guys. That's a joke. Don't go crazy on us. Uh, no, actually, go. It doesn't matter. But the butt hurt is amusing. Uh, hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.